Hi guys, welcome to Lavish Lady Talks. So I was going through some of my videos and I decided to put together a couple of slides um, displaying Andrea Kelly and the different stories that she's had over the years in regards to her ex-husband, Robert Sylvester Kelly. Um, just take a look and I'll be back with you guys with more of my commentary. Still to this day say, I didn't even know R. Kelly was married. Well, it was. I always say I'm the phantom wife. Like, we think she exists. She's like Santa Claus, but nobody's ever seen her. I am Andrea Kelly, and everybody calls me Drea, AKA baby here. I'm from Chicago, Southside girl, born and raised. I know about playing double dutch on the corner. I know about seeing people outside singing and dancing. I just came from that rich history, you know? Being a Southside girl, you were poor, but you didn't know it. My parents always exposed me to the arts. I first fell in love with it. I had to be about 10 years old watching Fame. And Debbie Allen, I can say, was like my first real dance teacher. My mom would move the furniture, and that's where I would rehearse. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I knew as a young girl that I would be a dancer. I met him during his 12 Play album, so that was like his first solo album where he was just coming out as R. Kelly, and that was the first tour I did with him. And our worlds came together, and we were inseparable from the day I became his choreographer. It, it seemed like it snuck up on me. I was like, okay, I don't know, you are Kelly now. I know you got a lot of girlfriends. We ain't gonna never be together, boo-boo. I ran for him from two years, like, mm-mm, no ma'am. Oh no, I don't want to be your girlfriend because you got about 1,500 of those. And then one day, I don't know, he just wooed me and I looked and I was like, he cute. Okay, man, we might be able to do this. Let me see what we working with. And it just seemed like overnight, it just turned into, and I think because we were friends first, that it was easy because I loved him as my friend. So to fall in love with your friend, it was just an easy transition. It wasn't one of those, okay, he's sending me flowers and jewelry and clothes and cars. It was like, dude, let's go to McDonald's. Let's get this little nine piece jumping off in a Coke and talk about playing basketball. So we just had that bond that was really, really cool. And there you go, next thing I know, we getting married. We have our first daughter, Joanne. We go on tour. I'm knocked up again. We have Jaya. We go on tour. I'm knocked up again. We have little Robert. So our life, it just went from homeboy, homegirl, dancer, choreographer, fiance, wife. Now we've got kids and nannies. We got a bus with toys and cribs and extra security. And I'm just wigging out because I'm like, how did it go from a girl on the south side getting food from a soup kitchen to R. Kelly's wife? You know, I think the strain, the strain of, I feel like I'm an artist just like Baby hair, you are an excellent storyteller. Check out this next slide. Hollywood, come on into Drea's Oasis. Welcome to Atlanta, y'all. Let's just start with the fact that you guys got a season two. I'm so excited. Yes, and girl, I'm so happy season two, baby. You feel like the show was very therapeutic for you in terms of the, some of the things that you were going through? Absolutely, but not just for me, for women watching who are in that same space of what the hell do I do from here? Mm -hmm. And feeling like, oh, well, I can't be weak if I cry, but if I can see her cry in front of the world, that doesn't make you weak, that makes you strong. Tears are just physical evidence of giving it to God. These your real babies. Are we gonna see them this season? Girl, no, I let my babies, you know, it's, it's enough having who your dad is. And now they were kind of used to me just being a mom. And now it's like your teachers come up to you and say, I love your mom on the show. So that's enough within itself. Now are you guys still cordial? You and, and We have to be, mm -hmm. we are. I mean, it's times when that eyebrow be tight, like, from. And then you have to go back to, you know what? This is the father of my children and we have to compromise and we have to make this work for them. Can you listen to his music? <laughs> Girl, I can't, honey, girl, I don't play. Oh, uh, he going on tour. Get the tickets. I'm gonna need you to buy t-shirts. Matter of fact, go twice. Yes, girl, I'm very clear. When he's good, 
His kids are good. Are you dating again? We saw you go on, you know, a date. I'm trying to get this together. Like, how does this dating thing really work? Because I'm at that place now. I don't want the journal, brother. I don't. People are like, what the hell is the journal, brother? Don't bring me a journal full of hopes, dreams, wants. Okay, baby hair. Okay. You're really good. Yes, that is my baby daddy playing in the background. What y'all about? Mm. Turn right to I-285 South. All the questions you have passed my test. Happy people! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn it. Yes, them who people? Happy people! Come on, baby daddy. Other baby daddy. Okay, baby here. So my question to you is, how did it go from this to you being hogtied? I'm just a little confused. All of these videos were post your divorce. Your divorce was over 10 years old and you were still talking about how you missed your friendship and that you were best 13 friends. 13 years, Andrea and Kelly was married to platinum selling R&B singer R. Kelly. <laughs> She's breaking her silence about the years of abuse. She says she suffered from the Grammy winning artist whose fame has been overshadowed by a list of disturbing sexual abuse allegations, all of which he denies. Take a look. In 1994, 27-year-old R. Kelly allegedly marries 15-year-old singer Aaliyah in a secret ceremony. The marriage is reportedly annulled less than a year later. From 1996 to 2002, during his marriage to Andrea, a marriage in which she says he physically abused her, three other women sue R. Kelly for alleged inappropriate sexual contact with teenagers. He reportedly settles with each of them. In 2008, R. Kelly stands trial for 14 counts of child pornography related to sexually explicit photos and a video of an allegedly underage girl. In sum, he's accused of performing disturbing acts, including urinating on her. He's acquitted of all charges. 2017, eight years after his divorce from Andrea, a report in BuzzFeed claims that Kelly engaged in controlling behavior, including holding several women against their will. He and women he lives with deny the allegation. This summer, he addressed many of the controversies swirling around him in a 19-minute long song called I Admit. Now I don't know what else to say except I'm so falsely accused. Tell me, how can you judge when you never walked in my shoes? Please welcome Andrea Kelly. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, you were married to R. Kelly for 13 years. You've been divorced for 10. Why come out now? Because it's about saving lives. Mm -hmm. And you cannot not speak when someone's life and what they've been through is parallel to yours. It's different when you hear things and it's like, oh, I heard it on the radio or I read it in a magazine, but it's different when you hear words that ring true to your spirit because you've survived it and been through it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring validity to these women's stories because I think so much it falls on deaf ears and no one believes them. So I felt if I could come forward and say, you know what, it's true because I've been through it and the things that these women are saying, they would not know my life unless they've been through it too. I have to speak up. So the Me Too thing is what pr pr prompted this? No, oh. actually it was seeing a young lady on another talk show oh. and some of the things she had described in detail, mm -hmm. I had been through, I mean verbatim. I see. Wow. And it was just something about that that mm -hmm. pierced my spirit that I was like, if no one else is going to speak up for her, if no one else is going to believe her, at least she knows that I do. Okay. Uh, I know this, this may be difficult for you to recount, 
Um, but I, I, I want to ask you this. You were the victim of domestic violence during your marriage, you say, and you talk about a Hummer attack. Can you share that with us? Um, I'm going to try to get through it without okay. crying. Very difficult. Um, a lot of people know that I'm a professional dancer, mm -hmm. so my body is my work. And I remember one time he attacked me in the back of a Hummer, and I do suffer from PTSD because of it. Whenever Hummers, when I would see them on the road, I would shake, my hands would sweat, and I would get nervous, and I couldn't breathe. And he attacked me one time in the back of a Hummer, and I thought I was going to die in the back of the Hummer. Because what he had done, he'd taken this left arm and pulled it behind me and his weight was on my body but he didn't realize his forearm was on my neck so as he's pressing down my breathing is getting labored and the only reason why i think i made it out is because i said robert you're gonna kill me i can't breathe you have to get your arm off of my neck mm -hmm. and i just remember sitting in the back of the hummer and it got blue and i just thought oh my god i'm gonna die in the back of this Hummer, and he's gonna drive off with my body in the back seat, and nobody's gonna know. And you also mm -hmm. talk about being hogtied. Yeah. What do you mean by that? He, um, mm -hmm. I oftentimes say when he would have an episode, I knew when it was about to happen because his eyes would change and his demeanor would change. And there was something in my spirit, I would get very fearful because I'm like, I think he's going to attack me. And he got really angry with me and he started arguing with me. And I'm like, you know what, I'm fine. I'm not going to do this with you. I don't want to argue with you. I don't want to fight with you. And he was like, you what? And I just remember instantly when he grabbed me and threw me down, I was on my stomach. So I'm trying to fight to get away. So what he did, he grabbed, um, it was the strap to his robe off of the bed and he had his knee in my back and he took both of my arms behind me, tied them and then attached my legs to my arms. And he hog tied me and left me on the side of the bed and he actually fell asleep. And that's the only way I got away because I was like, okay, God, how am I gonna get out of this? And God said, just lay there. And I'm thinking, well, no, I gotta get away. But that was the best thing I could have done because he actually fell asleep. And that's the way me being a dancer I'm like, if I keep moving my legs, it's eventually going to make this get loose. And if I can get my legs loose, I can get my arms loose. And I finally did and got away. Did you? Yeah. What well, set him off? What, what would cause him to get in these? It could be anything from the milk being too cold or not cold enough for breakfast. Yeah. It could be anything from you knew I told you not to wear that. That's too revealing. It could be if I answered him in the wrong way, if he felt there was too much tone in my voice. Was he like that before you married him? Not at all. No, of course mm -hmm. not at all. It's no abuse. And you yeah. get victim shamed, right? And your your kids have been bullied. Tell yes. tell us about this. When I came out, I thought, great, I'm going to empower women and save lives, and this is going to help someone, and they're going to believe his victims. And people actually said, oh, she's coming out because she needs money, or she didn't say anything because she got money. Mm -hmm. And there's not enough money in the world for any woman to stay <laughs> and be abused. At some point um, in your marriage, you reached a very dark place. I, I mean, which is quite understandable from what you're telling us. And you thought about suicide, I understand. I did. I tried well, to so commit tell, suicide. So tell us about that period. What happened there? It was after an incident with my youngest daughter, Joanne, who actually gave me the strength to leave. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at some pictures, and the long and short of it is he was being belligerent with me, and my daughter goes, Daddy, why are you being mean to my mom? Why are you talking to her that way? And it was like a light went off for me, because I knew in that moment, if you stay and she ends up with a man like him, yeah. and you tell her to leave, she's going to say, but why would I? You stayed with my dad all yeah. those years. Mm -hmm. So I knew I had to be a living example mm -hmm. for my daughter. But even in that moment of strength, there was a moment of weakness when I left the room, and I went out on the balcony. <laughs> And I climbed up and I put one foot was on the railing and the other was on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I got on top of the balcony and I looked down and God allowed me to see myself laying in blood. Mm -hmm. And I just remember hearing my kid's voice in the background saying, Mama, Mama, why did she jump? And that was my darkest moment because as a mom, when you're willing to leave your babies without their mom, that is your lowest low because of the mom you live for your children and the fact that I was ready. <laughs> the fact that I was willing to leave them let me know the best thing you have to do for you and your children to live is leave. Yeah. And then you filed a restraining order. I in did. 2005. What 
prompted you to do that? And did you tell anyone at that time? The police come to you? Did you tell family members what was going on? I told my family members. My grandfather actually took me to get the restraining order, which the irony in that is the first time I ever saw a man beat a woman was my grandfather, and he was a Baptist preacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so that was very difficult for me that here's this man taking me to get a restraining order and I've seen this and it's familiar and that's what I want people to understand too. It's not <laughs> something that just comes out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a, a root to their tree and if mm -hmm. you look at the root of your tree, mm -hmm. you will see where that behavior is familiar and why you've attracted it. Mm -hmm. And my grandparents growing up in that is how that happened for me. And yes, I had to get a restraining order that's against him. That's very true what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Very astute. Yeah. And by the way, we reached out to R. Kelly's management team about the allegations of domestic abuse, and they had no comment to us on this. But legally, we have to say that. Yeah. Do you think that uh, because he's he he's not paying child support for your youngest? He's not paying for any of my for children. any of the children. No, he stopped paying child is this support. A, is this a are you being baby hair? Listen. You got us all out here confused. What's really going on? Now, before you were saying this man took care of his kids, he was your best friend, you hoped one day y'all can get back to it, and now it's he not paying child support, he this monster, he didn't hogtied you. Like, what's really going on, sis? Like, you out here looking real, real, real crazy, sis. Like, for real. What I mean, which one is it? You you can't be out here flip flopping like that. Like, what's really going on? Was this a good man, a good provider, or was this a monster? I mean, the people want to know because um, you just switched it up on a sister. We just trying to figure it out, baby. Her, but anyway, make sure y'all like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.